Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. It's a chilly morning here in the desert. It's down to 40 some degrees Fahrenheit last night. Presently it's up to about uh, 60 out there and warming up, but it's still 54 in the rig. So <laughs> that's life in the desert. Some days it's just a little chillier than others. But that's okay. I got clothes, you know, I just layer up. Anyway, notch filters. Back when I did the uh, video on ICOM's twin pass band tuning and band pass filters in general, I had a comment or two uh, asking about notch filters, and in other media I had contacts from people asking about notch filters. So let's talk about notch filters. Let's go to the computer. This is a graphic illustration of your basic pass band or band pass filter in a uh, modern receiver. Uh, this would be the center IF frequency here in the IF chain of the radio. Now, all of the uh, signals that you have coming in are going to be in the IF. And this filter is there to prevent signals that are um, like out here from interfering with signals that you're interested in here. So only things that, that fit within the envelope of this passband filter will get through to the detector stage at the far end of the uh, chain. Now we talked in a previous video on the ICOM's twin ba bandpass tuning about how these filters work. If you're interested in that, go take a look at that video. Uh, but uh, in our case, we're interested in a notch filter. So let's say that we have a signal that we're interested in. Um, and we're tuned to it, and it's right here on our center IF frequency. But right next to it, there's an interfering signal right here. Now we can hear both of these because they are within the passband of the IF filter. What if I want to filter out just that signal? I could try to move the entire passband filter itself in that direction, but what's going to happen is this attenuation that occurs is going to cut into the signal that I'm interested in. By the time I get this over far enough where this interfering signal is, let's say, here, then the signal that I'm interested in is going to end up being here. And it's going to be partially attenuated by this side of the filter. So that's no good. That's where a notch filter is handy. What a notch filter does is it creates a notch within our um, within our uh, IF filter. It's a, it, what that notch is then doing is it's attenuating anything within this range. So our interfering signal will be essentially notched out. So that's technically what a notch filter is doing for us. It's giving us a little bit of granular control within the passband of our IF, uh, allowing us to, to create one little section where we can cut out a signal that we don't want to hear. That's essentially what a notch filter is. Let's go to the radio and I'll attempt to show you a live demo. Here's a good example where a solid carrier is interfering with hearing a station. Now there's a guy calling CQ in there occasionally, but this strong carrier right here, and I'll capture the screen to show you up close, is right where it's interfering with his signal. Hopefully he'll call CQ again. Oh, there he is. You can barely hear him, but that that carrier makes it almost impossible to understand what he's saying. So I'm going to hit the not the automatic notch filter, and the carrier's gone. It's right there, but we can't hear it. Right now, that that notch in the passband is right on top of it. And as you could hear, 
Even though he's a weak station, I could now actually hear him. Well, here's a pretty good example of where a manual notch filter on modern radios can be quite useful. I'm tuned to 14.3 megahertz, which is the Maritime uh, mobile net on 20 meters here. And directly beside it, adjacent to it, right here, you can see that there are three interfering carriers that cover a wide area. I'll go ahead and capture a snapshot of that screen to give you a better look at it. And if we listen to it, now you can hear those three tones. I can barely hear the station in the background that I'm interested in listening to, so they're quite annoying. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first try the automatic notch. Now, if you can, if you can hear it. The uh, software in the DSP is trying really hard to pick which signal to notch out. It's notched out one or two of them, but we still have some of the other ones. There's a high-pitched whine there you can still hear. So I'll go to manual notch. Now this just switched to MN here for the notch filter to show us that we're in manual mode. And if I hold down the notch filter button, I get some controls over here for the position and the width of the notch so this is a pretty wide area that these are covering so I'm gonna to go to a wider notch filter there's the wide filter and now the position control lets me move that notch back and forth across the uh, pass band of the IF so I can find the spot where I'm notching just those signals out let's see if we can get it Right about there, I've covered just about all of them. There's the narrow filter, and there's the wide filter, the wide notch filter. If he was a bit stronger, you'd be able to hear him quite clearly now that we've notched out most of those three interfering signals. So that's where a manual notch control, especially if you've got some width control of the notch filter, can be very useful in a unique case. So there you go. Notch filters, the second type of filter you can usually adjust on your radio and its uses. I hope you found that informative. Any further questions, of course, put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them for you. Till the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.